Hello, this is Joshua for Frost Dragon Designs, and today I'd like to talk to you about my Pisces Zodiac Cat Hard Enamel Pin. This pin is part of Series 4 of my larger Black Cat RPG collection. In Series 4, I based the first 12 pins off of the 12 astrological signs of the Western Zodiac. This pin is based on Pisces, the fish. So let's get into the design. Here is the sketch that I used for Pisces, but this sketch doesn't really tell the full story. The full story is that this sketch was based on something else that I had designed earlier. In 2018, I made my first attempt at an RPG-based pin Kickstarter. It was called the Chibi Mermaid Adventure. I'll put the link to it in the description below if you want to go see a piece of history. Humorous side note, there is a video that starts with me going, Hello! Just like in these videos. I had no idea I've been doing that for so long. Anyway, only two of those designs ended up being funded, and a third one was funded in a separate Kickstarter later. But one of the unfunded designs was a mermaid with a trident called a Tidebreaker, and there was something about that design that I really liked, and I had always wished that I had gotten that pin design produced. So when I decided that I was going to be doing a mermaid kitty for series four, it was kind of like, well, here's a chance. Maybe I can reimagine that character as one of the Black Cat RPG characters. So if you'd like to think of it this way, it's kind of like the Tidebreaker got reincarnated as a kitty. So when I started working on this design, of course, I brought in a copy of the Tidebreaker vector file to see what parts I could take and reuse in this design. I like to think of it as recycling or upcycling or, if nothing else, time saving. I actually also took a couple pieces from the Deep Defender in the very beginning. It mostly ended up just being those two fins because the, the lower part of the body I ended up just redrawing anyway. But I have no shame when it comes to reusing assets, art assets, that I have already used in prior pins. But in this case, it really served more as a starting point than, than a direct importing of items, because everything needed to be changed and adjusted to fit the kitty. Now, the trident and the crown on the tidebreaker was going to be metal colored um, where the metal is. So I had to basically redesign that part to be uh, gray enamel like I do for metal in the Black Cat RPG series. The one part that I was able to pretty much just wholesale take over and move into the Pisces pin design without much fuss or effort was the hair. And part of the reason that that worked for this design is because that's in my in other black cat rpg pins i have allowed for the kitties to have human-like hair in some designs so it didn't seem wildly out of place for this design for her to have long white flowing hair not all of the kitties are like this but enough of them are that it doesn't seem out of place this is actually something that I think is really fun and special about working on a project like the Black Cat RPG, where I have over 100 pin designs in this project now. There is a history of designs. There are rules, for lack of a better term, that I have created, that I abide by. And what's interesting about the rules is once you've established rules and you understand them, you can then break those rules, which is kind of what happened with the hair thing, because... At first, none of them had human-like hair, and then it was one with a little bit, and then, you know, it just kind of built from there. And I mean, you know, as an artist and a designer, that level of internal consistency and knowledgeable rule-breaking is just something I find really fun. And I, when I see it in other people's long-term projects, I get excited about it too, because it's just, it's like, it's like I see what you did there. That was clever. I like that. I don't know if that's going to make sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me. So I think this was the point in the video where I started realizing that I wasn't going to be able to to copy as much of the style from the Tidebreaker as I originally thought I was going to. I kind of made up my mind that, you know, the trident and the hair were going to have to be enough because I wasn't sure that the crown was working, the you know, as the same shapes. Uh, I had already started to deviate with the outfit itself, and, you know, it was just kind of one of those decision points where I was like, you know, it was cool that it's a reincarnation, but I don't have to stick with every single detail on the other one. It's okay if it's just in the spirit of. So I gave myself permission to start being a little more uh, experimental with what I was doing with the outfit, 
Um, it started being, you know, asymmetrical. I was still, you know, the whole time I was trying to figure out the color scheme. And I think there's a couple times where I tried to make the color scheme very similar to the Tidebreaker, but it just didn't work. So I ended up choosing different colors. I almost went with that neon green for the gems, but it, it just, something about it just didn't quite feel sleek enough. Overall, I am extremely happy with how this design came out, and I do feel like it is the true successor to the Tidebreaker that never was. So if you liked seeing this video and hearing the backstory, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. I will have a new design video out next week. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me, and I'll see you in the next one.